Blog Show. Blog Show. Welcome to the Blog Show. I'm your host, Jamie Mach, and this is your other host, Dan Steinberg, and here's your sports blogging update. That's right. We're going to start with baseball. Baseball playoffs are going on, and Jamie, what was the biggest story of the first week of the baseball playoffs? I think it was A-Rod spraying uh, bug repellent all over this umpire's crotch. Well, it was, it was certainly <laughs> insects in one way or another. This was kind of an interesting shot. I would have thought that he would have found a she-male to be spraying with bug spray, but it's a nice... He does like the she-male muscular type. We saw that photo on Ballsiest.com. We led with it because it's just a great visual. It's a great look. Yeah, well, let's move on to the other big story from the baseball playoffs. LeBron showing up at an Indians game wearing a Yankees cap. I mean, the guy's from Akron. This was all over the blog sphere. What did you think about it? I thought he was as basketballful.blogspot.com called him a fan whore. That's right. Mondesi's house, the great Pittsburgh sports blog, said mm -hmm. that this is just one more piece of evidence that proves Cleveland sucks. Yeah, and Pittsburgh blog would say that. But also, 100% injury rate.blogspot.com was pissed off about it for whatever reason. But True Hoop, Henry Abbott's uh, True Hoop, has LeBron's back. He says it makes him an even better fan because he was courageous enough to wear his Yankees hat behind enemy lines. And I sort of agree with him. As True Hoop pointed out, we can kick whoever we want to kiss, we can marry whoever we want to marry, and we can damn well root for whoever we want to root for. Yeah, especially if they won four championships during your formative years, as the Yankees did when LeBron was a tweenager slash teenager. Okay, true enough. Let's move to the other AL East powerhouse, that would be the Boston Red Sox, and before the playoffs even began, some of the Red Sox celebrated in style. Yeah, and this, this worked for them, because they swept the Angels. You see them all out on the town, I mean, I say they all, because literally, damn near the whole team was out uh, popping bubbly. Josh Beckett, Dice Kim Hatsuzaka, Dustin Pedroia, Jonathan Papelbon in the DJ booth. Hey, all he needs is one mic. Mike Lowell, Clay Buckholtz looking impossible drunk, ready to go home. I mean, it looks like he just wandered off the party bus somewhere in the middle of Topeka. Yeah, and the, the, the Red Sox were supposed to be the idiots a few years ago. They lost, you know, head idiot Kevin Millar and Johnny Damon, but here they are uh, partying down. LOL jocks put their own spin on the pictures, added in some uh, funny Photoshop uh, cap captioning, and, uh, you know, they should do this before the ALCS as well. And we should point out that we saw the, the photos originally on your fantasy team stocks, which is the name of a blog. The name of a blog. Yeah, not the, my fantasy team certainly certainly does not. Uh, on the flip side of, of the coin here is the, uh, the Cubs, who have not done so well in the playoffs. They got swept right out of it, but that doesn't mean we loved Ryan Dempster any less. That's right. Ryan Dempster was warming up before a game, kind of bantering with some fans, talking about the name of his fantasy baseball team, which was the Taints, and then he, he was asked for, uh, asked for the warm-up ball. He finally gave it to the fans. She asked him for an autograph, and what did he autograph the ball with, Jamie? Christine, take your damn top off. Sure. And, <laughs> touching thought. And this story showed up on Deadspin.com. I really can't blame the guy. It gets, it gets long and lonely out there in the bullpen. You don't do anything for eight innings, and you come in for toss three outs. you got to banter a little bit with the lovely ladies in the bleachers. Speaking of banter, I think my favorite bit of bantering of the season thus far in any sport would be Mike Gundy from Oklahoma State Epic. bantering with the media, a little friendly kind of conversation he had, and this, this naturally led to some uh, rip-offs. Yeah, so here's a Toyota dealership in Norman, Oklahoma, their send-up of Mike Gundy. That's garbage, and the person who put it in here is garbage. Fowler Toyota has Tundra's $6,000 off or 0% for 60 months. Are you kidding me? Buy from me! I'm a man! I'm 40! And we saw that commercial on Every Day Should Be Saturday. I'm surprised by the acting in Norman, Oklahoma. That was spot on. Top notch. Very good portrayal there of Mike Gundy. Also, another big story from last week is South Florida. The Bulls beating West Virginia. They've cracked the AP uh, top five. And their quarterback has his own rap song. We saw this one on EverydayShouldBeSaturday.com as well. They're on fire. The kicker for South Florida, Delbert Alvarado. Right. Every spit, should really spitting straight Delbert. fire on, yeah. on the uh, lyrics here. It's G to the R-O-T-H-E for Macroth, the uh, quarterback. And also, I thought this was, this was a bit of brilliant uh, here in, in lyricism. He rhymed Big East with Beast, which is something that no headline writer has ever done before. I don't think so, no. And, you know, I guess South Florida has been one of the big successful stories of the, of the past couple weeks. Southern Cal, on the other hand, has kind of been going downhill a little bit. So Struggled with yeah. Washington State, lost shockingly to Stanford, and John David Booty did not perform super well in that game. No, David Booty, uh, the Heisman campaign, bootiesforbooty.com, has been uh, derailed, and he's taking the loss pretty hard. Right. So hard that he had to hit the bottle. Sportsbybrooks.com has a report that he went out on the town the night of the loss after you know, being a 40-point favorite against Stanford and, and losing. He was seen out on the town. Doing shots at a bar called Le Doux. I'm appalled by Is that. Is that good pronunciation <laughs> or not? Actually, I have no problem with him you know, blowing off some steam after a loss. And, I mean, he's only, you know, learns from the best. Matt Leinart, former USC quarterback, back after the, the Cardinals beat the Bears last week. He went out and had some drinks with Michael Silver from YahooSports.com and in Michael Silver's column, there was a great quote from Leinart saying that he doesn't want to split time with Kurt Warner. He wants the Cardinals to ride or die with him. That's right. So, you know, I mean, Booty's just taking after Leinart. Okay. Before we leave the Southern Cal quarterbacks, we should point out that the great Southern Cal blog, Boy from Tro 
boy from Troy yes. is making some t-shirts. Boo T. Yeah, Boo T. That's blog show esque t-shirt awesome. uh, quality right there. Awesome. Uh, not so bad, boy from Troy. And switching up from college to the NFL, but still talking about quarterbacks. I'm pretty glad that the, the Packers lost on Sunday Night Football to the Bears because the media was getting a little overboard with all of the uh, the Brett Favre uh, adoration. Case in point, JoeSportsFan.com collected the top seven most ridiculous quotes about Favre heading into week five. Number seven These are was, quotes from this season, we should they, point out. From this season. My no, favorite was number seven from Chris Berman. Quote, rooting for Favre is like rooting for America. Well, it's true, isn't it? No, it's not overboard. It's rugged over. good looks. Well, I guess my favorite was <laughs> with Jay Mariotti, who kind of goes on about how Favre is not great for Bears fans, but it's great news for football, sports, and when you think about it, life. <laughs> I, I, when I do think about it, that's, that's true. And you know, that's the old guard of, of quarterback in the NFL. The new guard is Vince Young, down there in Tennessee with the Titans, threatening to make a playoff spot this year, 8-8 eight eight last year. But FanIQ.com has noted that Vince Young has one big detriment, and it's across his back. Arguably the worst tattoo in the NFL. It just says V. Young, as if it was his uniform jersey, just inked across his back. I think it's a great tattoo. And actually, I heard TJ Hushmanzad is interested in getting one, but he needs to get a signing bonus. For this. Oh, ding for that one. Very nice. Yeah, because that would get four or $500 That's for right. Hushmanzad. Yeah. Before we leave crazy tattoos, we wanted to mention quickly, Stephen Jackson also has a great tattoo on his chest of, mm -hmm. of praying hands holding a gun. Yes. As all praying hands should do. It's very wholesome. And speaking of back tattoos, Deshaun Stevenson of the Washington Wizards has a, a Stevenson tattoo on his back. I haven't yet gotten the full look, but I've seen the S and I've seen the N. Uh, look to DC Sports Blog for the breaking news on that one. The Big Lead.com had some Deshaun. Sean Stevenson, uh, Mr. 50-50, Mr. 50, sorry, uh, uh, news this week. They found his MySpace page That's right. and uh, posted it up. There's a great picture of Stevenson with, uh, with a grill piece, mm -hmm. top and bottom, saying Papa Smurf. Yeah, I thought it was a good look. And he also, striking visual. He also has some very uh, kind of unseemly dressed females that kind of have to look away. For Deshaun second. Stevenson and the Washington Wizards, they, they're what the, makes the uh, bog go round. That's right. Well, I think we're pretty much done with all of our, our material, but I wanted to ask you, how is the blog show t-shirt shop? Today? Well, we sold one more shirt this week to my brother's buddy Jesse, and he was kind enough to model it at FedEx Field before the Redskins-Lions game. There that. he is Looking with the Boom good. King, wearing it proudly. And, uh, you know, our, our blog show watcher Jesse, blog show t-shirt model, sexy beast. No very, doubt about it. Very good. And I think the blog show t-shirt shop is also going to be offering Ferrat is for real shirts yes. coming up. Yes, in all four colors of all the teams that he started for over his storied career. Just Google blog show t-shirt shop. But before we go on this very momentous blog show number 25, we're going to play you the YouTube clip of the week. It comes from FanHouse. This is Miss Gossip sending up the MSG legal debacle with uh, her variation on those UPS commercials. That's where Brown Sanders comes in. Sexually harass her enough that she files a lawsuit against you. Then convince a jury to award her $12 million of your employer's money. See, she'll use that money to buy 1.2 million pairs of star grades. That'll keep your crazy point guard busy enough to stay focused. And it'll leave all the interns for you to harass. See, it's not just about sexual harassment. It's sexual harassment at MSG. Now, what do you say we give Isaiah a bigger... Blog show! Blog show! show.